Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Johnny Mack with your daily comedy news. Jimmy Kimmel commented on a new poll that shows Donald Trump ahead of President Biden in a hypothetical matchup. And Kimmel reminded viewers that polling a year ahead of an election is always super accurate. And if you don't believe me, just ask President Hillary Clinton. Kimmel went with it's like after the turn of the Jedi, the people in the galaxy were like, you know, Princess Leia is kind of a dud. Why don't we give the emperor another shot? Sarah Silverman hosting The Daily Show said, don't panic. It's still too early to say Biden will definitely lose. He could absolutely die in his sleep instead. (laughs) Oh, wow. Biden old jokes are fun, I got to admit. All right. If you're in St. Louis and you have Gaffigan tickets this weekend, make sure you go to the correct show. This weekend, conductor James Gaffigan will lead the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra and Chorus at the Stifle Theater right next door in the Enterprise Center. Jim Gaffigan and Jerry Seinfeld, but kind of messes up the story. Jim Gaffigan. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch spoke to conductor James Gaffigan and said, you know, that guy is following me everywhere. The paper tells us their relationship got off to a rocky start. Around 2000 or 2001, James Gaffigan got a phone call on his mobile phone. On the other end, a man eating potato chips said, who is this? James Gaffigan said, I'm sorry, who is this? The conductor said, this is Jimmy Gaffigan, as he was called at the time. The other person started swearing and accusing James of identity theft. That person was comedian Jim Gaffigan. Somehow, both James and Jim had bought a MacBook on the same day, and Apple confused their email addresses. James said he thought someone was stealing his credit card information. It was so random. James assured Jim that he had bought the computer (laughs) himself. They calmed down. They compared notes. James said, we started laughing and talked for about half an hour. They've yet to meet in person. James Gaffigan is hoping they'll run into each other on the streets of St. Louis. The New York Comedy Festival continues. I googled New York Comedy Festival. Not much coming up. I'm not seeing recaps or anything. Again, love the festival, but it just doesn't cut through in New York City for some reason. One thing that did cut through was the annual Bob Woodruff Foundation Stand Up for Heroes event on Monday night. And to get that to cut through in the Big Apple, you gotta whip it out. Bruce Springsteen, John Stewart. Josh Groban, John Mellencamp, Tracy Morgan, Jimmy Carr, Ronnie Chang, Shane Gillis, and a video message from Prince Harry. Let's listen. Good evening, everyone, and hello, New York. Obviously, I was deeply honored when Bob asked me to debut my stand-up act with you all tonight. I was so relieved to be invited back, but then I started to question whether his invite for me to actually do stand-up was in fact his idea of a joke. Either way, Due to the shockingly low representation of gingers last year, and out of respect for my fellow endangered species, here I am, reporting for duty. So as I mention often, I'm the writer on the Palace Intrigue podcast. We talk about the British royal family, seven days a week, Palace Intrigue, wherever you get your shows. It was interesting that Harry wore his military medals. Sometimes that's a little controversial. Harry joked about being somebody who is rarely scrutinized, and there was some kind of gag where they were trying to keep him on script, and they kind of played him off. Also controversy, the video of Harry doing this was released online just minutes before his father, King Charles III, was about to give his first king speech at Parliament. I'm not going to bog down on this here. If you want to hear all about it, flip on over to Palace Intrigue, wherever you get your shows. Jon Stewart said, I just turned 60 years old. You know you're getting old when you say how old you are and people clap. When I was on The Daily Show, I had a suit on, the makeup, the lights were beautiful. And if you watched that show, you probably thought, that guy could get upstairs. No problem. The sad thing is, I'm rich. I don't have to look like this. Many people do surgery on people like me, but I wake up in the morning and go, eh, screw it. Aging is a humiliating process. Many of you are experiencing it. That's clear. It's a charity event, so you're the people with disposable income because who knows how long you have. Two stories about Rob Schneider. The first from Newsweek. Actor and comedian Rob Schneider has been criticized online after weighing in on Travis Kelsey's appearance in a Pfizer commercial. Travis Kelsey has a new commercial encouraging you to get a twofer, which is a COVID-19 shot and a flu shot at the same time. Schneider, in a tweet, wrote, Dear Travis Kelsey, and then shared some differing opinions about vaccines. Meanwhile, I haven't seen this in any of the places I usually source, but the Christian Post reports that Rob Schneider has converted to Catholicism. On social media, Schneider wrote, At 60, you realize the very real fragility of life and the temporariness of it all. A humbling knowledge that there is indeed a time limit for all things, and that God's design, though perfect, is precious far beyond its brevity. I am a new convert to Catholicism. According to the Christian Post, Schneider wrote, I was so angry at the people who shut down the schools and indeed the world and coerced others to do things against their will, which hurt many people deeply. I offer my unconditional forgiveness and amnesty. How can I stay mad at the famous singers who would not let others into a Broadway show unless they had an experimental jab? 
I will never forget how kind he was to me and my friends when he was the musical guest on SNL. Not clear who he's talking about there. How can I continue to hold a grudge against the actor who shamed people like me, but has been such a great example for other actors to never give up, keep fighting for their dreams? How can I still be mad at the lovely actress that said she could no longer be friends with people who didn't get it, knowing how incredibly kind she is with every child that she meets? Is this, uh, so the back to back of those two stories, is this second story super sarcastic? Is it a real, like, oh yeah, I've changed my ways? Let's keep an eye on that one. I can't tell from reading it. Neil deGrasse Tyson got into it with Bill Maher. Tyson brought up how Bill Maher no longer performed stand up on college campuses and asked if Maher was writing off an entire generation by refusing to adjust to what students find acceptable. He asked Maher, why is it their fault, not your fault? Bill Maher defended his side, saying literally every comedian had abandoned performing at colleges because they can't avoid offending students. I'm not sure that's entirely true. Maher said, I've given up on any place that doesn't even remotely attempt to believe in free speech and thinks anything they hear that they don't like, that they don't agree with is violence. These people are effing nuts and you should be calling them out. You're doing what your parents do. You're taking the path of least resistance and therefore hurting the kids and yourself. Parents ruin both their lives. They ruin their effing spoiled kids' lives and they ruin their own lives because the kids rule the roost. So that's what you're doing on a national level. Tyson said the move is, it's not good enough to be right. You also have to be effective. Cracked wrote, 10 female comedians more successful than Amy Schumer. You may recall that Amy Schumer declared herself the most successful female comedian of all time. I'll just read you the names they came up with. We don't have to bog down into the why of it all. According to Cracked, Lucille Ball, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Carol Burnett, Tina Fey, Roseanne Barr, Joan Rivers, Whoopi Goldberg, Lily Tomlin, Mary Tyler Moore, Amy Poehler. Edison Research announced the top 50 podcasts in the United States for quarter three. I did not make the list, but Theo Vaughn, now number five. Joe Rogan at number one. Whitney Cummings told Yahoo, I started comedy in L.A., which I highly recommend for people. The first lot I ever did was a place called M Bar, which is now closed, but doing comedy in places that aren't built for comedy. By the time you get to a club like the Improv, you have this skill set that I think not a lot of comics have if they came up in other cities. Thank you for reminding me, Whitney. So I was on the Staten Island Ferry over the weekend. You may recall Colin Jost and Pete Davidson bought a ferry to convert it into a comedy club. So as I was sitting on the ferry for half an hour, I was looking at it, trying to figure out how would this possibly work as a comedy club? Maybe if they built on the top deck, but I was in the middle there. The ceilings are super low, which I guess sometimes can work, but like nothing about a ferry feels like it's going to be good for comedy. But Pete Davidson knows a lot more about comedy than I do. So what do I know? But I don't own a ferry either. Back to Whitney Cummings, who said, how did I get started? I think childhood. I mean, how far are we going back? Alcoholic home, try to get attention from drunk parents. It's probably when I started, started or knew I wanted to be or had to be an entertainer. My dad used to watch Roddy Dangerfield, and I remember that I couldn't get his attention, so I used to think, I got to get in that box. Tonight at the New York Comedy Festival, 6.30 at the Edison Ballroom. Cool comedy, hot cuisine, a tribute to Bob Saget. Many of Bob's friends will be in the room, including Michael Che, Nikki Glaser, Jeff Ross, two of the Counting Crows, and others to be announced. Run out of time to make those announcements, but regardless, that list is already cool. Margaret Cho's at Town Hall at 7. Conan's at BAM at 8. Cat Timph at the Hard Rock at 8. At the Comic Strip at 8, Comedy for Peace, a funny special comedy international project with Muslim, Jewish, and Christian comedians that was founded in March of 2019. And a whole lot of smaller shows that I did not read to you tomorrow. We really get to some bigger names. Meanwhile, tonight in Delaware, it's the inaugural Towers Comedy Festival. Fifteen national comics will storm Delaware beaches on a mission to tickle your throat until it hurts. Hmm. These are people you've heard of. Nikki Glaser, Michael Rappaport, Hannah Einbender, Alonzo Bowden. Nikki's Friday night, Hannah is Saturday, Rappaport is uh, tomorrow. I don't know when Alonzo is. Hmm. Matt Rogers from Las Culturistas is putting out Have You Heard of Christmas, a dance pop album of songs from his 2022 Showtime special of the same name. Also, It's Christmas contemplates the unique predicament of trying to sleep with a sexy stranger while you're staying with your family. Some song titles include Hottest Female Up in Whoville and God's Up to His Tricks. Matt Rogers says, my advice to anyone out there who's trying to write a pop album that's also comedy and seasonal is just go for it. Don't question any of your impulses. You can't be wrong. Bad news, if you like Letterkenny, it's coming to an end with season 12. The final six episodes will drop on Hulu, Tuesday, December 26th. And comedian Mark Watson got locked out of his own show. Audience is arriving at the Tobacco Factory. We're surprised to see Mark Watson sitting at the bar. He couldn't get into the dressing room. 
Somebody caught this on TikTok. They were 15 minutes uh, to go until the show. Mark Watson said, you know, we could do it here, but you paid for a seat and you paid to be in a room resembling a theater. So I just wanted you to know in case it looks like I'm very complacent and just drinking at the bar. And yes, I am drinking at the bar, but I'm taking the situation as seriously as you are. It's no one's fault. I've been here for an hour to let them know I'm here. And that was the aim that everybody would relax. But I think they've over relaxed a bit. That's your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Overcast, Pocket Cast, wherever you get your shows. See you tomorrow.